How's it going everyone? This is a video on runaway sexual selection, aka Fisherian Runaway, and we are Steven Oviedo, Frank Henriquez, and Daniel Haro. Here we'll talk about some definitions and ideas leading towards runaway selection. First off, we'll talk about natural selection. Natural selection can be defined as a gradual process by which inheritable biological traits become either more or less common in a population as a function of the effects of inheritable traits on reproductive success. Under natural selection, we have sexual selection, defined as natural selection arising through preference by one sex for certain characteristics in individuals of other sex. There are two types of sexual selection. Number one, intrasexual selection is male-on-male -male competition based on the limited amount of females. Number two, intersexual selection is based on female-on-male mating choice where one sex choice among the other. Looking at this diagram, there are four ways mating choice can happen. Number one, good genes. Number two, direct benefits. Number three, sensory bias. Number four, runaway selection. As discussed on a previous slide, we will talk further in depth on one of the mating choices called runaway selection. Runaway selection is when gene A codes for a trait in males and gene B codes for a preference of the trait in females. We expect the male trait to become more prominent and linkage to occur between gene A and B. This leads to an increase of the female population who prefer that trait and the males who express that trait. There are many examples of females choosing mates based on less useful traits. For example, song complexity or even traits determinantal to survival. For another example, brightly colored plumage as in the case of the peacock. These cases present evolutionary biologists with a bit of a puzzle. How do these preferences arise in the first place? If a female chooses a male with bright feathers, her sons will have bright feathers, which are likely to attract predators. A gene for choosing brightly colored males would seem to be disadvantageous. How do such genes spread through a population? Imagine a bird population in which females choose mates at random. Males with slightly longer tails fly a little more adeptly, avoid predation, and so survive better than males with slightly shorter tails. In this situation, a gene for female choosing, choosing this longer tails equals sexier will be favored since by choosing a long-tailed male, she will have sons with longer tails. This trait will spread through the population until most males have long tails and most females prefer long tailed mates. So now that we've seen how Fisherian runaway can lead to extreme traits expressed in males, let's see how it can lead to linkage disequilibrium. By imagining a dominant allele coding for vibrant feathers and a dominant allele coding for preference for vibrant feathers in peacocks. So this right here is going to be expressed in males and this is going to be expressed in females. Now if we see a male expressing that phenotype right here and a female expressing this phenotype they're likely to mate with each other because she's gonna have a preference for him so now what we expect to see is the following progeny ratio 25 percent are gonna have both 25 percent are gonna have one 25 percent the other and 25 percent have neither and this is because if this is a dominant allele say big a little a this crossing with this gives us a 1 to 1 ratio, 50% chance. And 50% times 50% gives us this. So, now if this mates with this, what do we expect to see? So now we have this situation giving us a 3 to 1 ratio of phenotype. So 75% times 75% is 56%, so about half of this progeny are going to have both alleles. So let's draw half. And 75% are going to have one or the other. And do, we do expect to see this happen, right? Whether it's male or female, if it's a male and he expresses that and this female likes that, then we expect this to happen. Same here, we expect this to happen, increasing the rate of individuals with both alleles. And over time, we can see how this will lead to linkage disequilibrium. 
even in this situation, we now have a 50% chance of having progeny with both alleles.